This is Michael Bennett. I am with Michelin Metals. Today we are back again with Gary Rogers, the pretty much most amazing metallurgist that I know. I think he's probably the only metallurgist I know personally, and I am very glad to know him. He is helping us make an amazing series of some pretty, pretty good educational videos on, on every type of metal. So today we are going to be talking about high temp nickel based alloys and super alloys. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to him. So take it away, Gary. Thank you, Michael. Uh, again, this is Gary Ray Rogers. I'm a mechanical engineer and a materials engineer. And today I'm going to talk about the basis for super alloys, and that basis is probably nickel. Uh, nickel is the most important ingredient for most of these super alloys. And, uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the generally nickel uh, 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 alloys of, uh, of nickel. And. Uh, Nickel is a uh, chemical element. It's uh, symbol Ni, atomic number 28. It's a silvery white, lustrous metal. It can be polished to a high shine. It's the things that we like about it. It's very slow to react to uh, air at ambient conditions because it forms a protective oxide layer. Uh, nickel is almost always found in combination with iron because those two elements origin uh, it was in the, on the inside of a supernova that's that's where all our metals come from and those are the one of the two most common elements in the universe the universe is iron and nickel uh, nickel has been used as far back as 3000 BC they found a dagger I just read recently that was in the King Tut's tomb that was made out of a meteorite that they're pretty sure is an iron nickel meteorite and they made a dagger out of it it was first uh, classified as an element back in 1750, and actually, they, when they first found it, it was combined with arsenic, and they thought it was copper, and they kept trying to refine it, and it would make their miners sick, and it wouldn't make any copper. And there's an old German uh, a myth of a, uh, of, a, of a sprite that lives in mines, and his name is Kupfernickel, and that's where nickel got its name, because they couldn't figure out how come they couldn't get any copper out of this copper <laughs> copper ore, which turned out to be almost pure nickel ore. And uh, nickel only really got important to to be used by uh, the industrial world in the 1880s and 90s, and uh, when they started making the stainless steels, because nickel is a part of stainless steels. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest deposits they started was in New Caledonia. They found some in uh, Canada and in Russia and in South Africa and uh, it's it's kind of all over there I think they found a whole bunch now in Australia too and uh, nickel is is a very interesting uh, uh, element it's uh, one of the four elements that are ferromagnetic that means you can make a uh, magnet out of it and also it's a super alloy and uh, Super alloys, just to remind you, are space age alloys that are made in a number of different formats like round bar and pipe and tube and sheet and coils and plates and depending on the alloy, probably anything else that you want. But uh, Michael's business tends to deal mostly in those kinds of forms of, of super alloys. And nickel makes such a super alloy because it, it's really... Uh, it has excellent mechanical strength and its resistance to creep and Michael and I were just talking about creep and that's when you get something really really hot like the inside of a jet airplane and it spins around really really fast it tends to stretch and then the jet bl in engine blades tend to rub well nickel is one of those things that will keep that from happening and it prevents creep and so they use that in, uh, in, in many super alloys uh, it also mixes really well it's one of those metals that'll mix with almost any other metal quite well. Um, it mixes completely with copper at any percentage of each. Um, there's a lot of different super alloys that uh, are sold that, that that are made with nickel as a base. Some of them are the trade names could be like alnico, which would be aluminum cobalt used in magnets, alumel, chromel, cupro nickel. Of course, that's with copper. Ferro nickels with iron. There's hastaloy, which has got molybdenum, chromium, and tungsten, and we'll talk about that. Inconel, which is chromium and iron, which we're going to talk about, and also manel, which is copper, iron, and manganese, which we'll also talk about. 
And uh, then there's a number of other very interesting uh, nickel alloys uh, that uh, we will be discussing in further episodes of, of uh, metals here on Michelin Metals. And uh, back to you, Michael. Well, I just have to say that was awesome. Uh, the Cupro nickel, that, that little history story, I mean, that was just fantastic. I, I can say that just being a part of these is teaching me a lot. And uh, so it's got to be teaching people that, that don't really know any of this stuff as well just so much. So, again, thank you so much, Gary. It's been great. Uh, and you guys all stay tuned in to the next one, and we'll get a little more specific into Inconel, and then we'll start talking about some Monels and Hastelis. So, again, thanks for tuning in.